Hi, and welcome to 3dmotive.com. My name is Stephen G. Wells, and I'm a senior 3D artist. In this tips and tricks tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at meshes in Marmoset Toolbag 2. Now, Mar Marmoset Toolbag 1 is a really great standalone in game renderer. Um, it had a lot of pluses to it, but it, it, it could be expanded upon, and they did expand upon it in number 2. Actually, it's really pretty darn cool. So what we want to do is we want to go ahead and jump into it. Let's go ahead and take a look at the interface. Now this is the basic Marmoset Toolbag 2 interface that you're going to get. You have a couple different control panels on both sides. If you don't want to see the control panels, of course, you can always just hit your spacebar. But obviously we need that to be able to see what we're doing. So the first thing we want to look at doing is importing our mesh. Now again, it used to be just OBJs, but it now supports a number of different file formats. Marmoset will now read a 3DS file, which is a 3D Studio file, usually a 3D Studio Max file. It'll support AutoCAD. It'll support the Autodesk FBX file format. Uh, it'll import a, a Marmoset mesh from Toolbag 1. Of course, it does the OBJs, and it does another one called a DAE, which is a Collada model. I don't particularly use that one, but it's there. A couple different ways we can look to now bring in a mesh into Marmoset. Now, there's about three different ways. One is to go up to File, Import Mesh. It's just that quick and simple. Another, of course, is if you saw it, if I hit the File to Import Mesh, there is a shortcut, Control B, and I'm always about shortcuts. If we can do Control B and say, bring in. Um, a model. I'm all for it. It's quick, it's easy. Of course, we could do the import mesh from there. And let's go ahead and let's go ahead and grab a drone, a 3DS. Alright, now it is there, but you can't see it because this the shader is really huge. If I click the little eyeball on the layer tab. You can see that here's the drone. It's really small. It's not necessarily that's really small. It's that the shader is really large, all right? So anyway, so there, so there's the file import mesh. There's the control B, or there's the old-fashioned drag and drop. So if I get to my folder, here's the FBX. I'll just click and drag. All right. Now, if I hide my drone, there's the camera. All right. So you again, you can import by going File, Import Mesh. You can do Control B, or you can literally just drag and drop. It's, it's very easy to get meshes into this model, uh, into this uh, program. One of the things I really love about Marmoset, especially with the FBX, is that as you can see over here, it'll actually keep in our stack all the different pieces of the model separately, which is awesome. Of course, I can collapse the stack by cl clicking the little uh, minus key. It's plus and minus to expand it as I need to. Let's go ahead and show the drone back. All right, I'm going to go ahead and select the drone model. I just select it there. I'm going to grab the little transform gizmo. This is where we can move, rotate, and do whatever we need to. I'm just going to click it and I'm just going to drag it off to one side for now. All right, let's not forget the Seder. I'm going to go ahead and turn that on. Of course, it's huge. So we want to look to go ahead and scale the Seder down. Now, the easiest way to do that is over here. As you can see, we actually have a transform palette. We have X, Y, and Z rotation. Now, that's basically what these gizmos do. I can actually move my model, obviously by grabbing the, the transform gizmo. Okay, That's in the uh, Y. I can move it this way in the X. And of course, the Z is forward and back. So it's closer and far. We can also go ahead and scale our model. Now, obviously, this thing is huge. So we want to go ahead and just drop this down. Let's say try 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and 0.5. All right, that's better, but it's still not good enough. Let's try 0, 02, 0, 02 and zero two. Let's zoom in. Okay, that works better. 
That works much better. I'm going to go ahead and just grab it and now move it off to the side. Actually, maybe that's a little too small. Let's try uh, five. Five and five. There we go. All right, so that works better. Let's go ahead and I want to grab the drone really quickly. And I'm going to go ahead and just move it over. Now, you can select via the stack, or you can select by just clicking on the model itself. It really doesn't matter which way you do it. All right, so we've got our three different meshes, three different models. If we want, we can uh, come into the animation tab. If you were doing like a, a turntable of this particular scene, we could set up, say, 60 frames and hit play. As you can see, it's going to rotate around at that particular speed. All right, go ahead and hit stop. Turn this back to zero. All right. Now, for putting materials on these models, uh, that's of course assuming I had materials for all the models. I really don't. I just have something for the Seder. But it's easy enough to do. Right now, they're all using the same diffuse color, or the same diffuse material. It has a basic bump map on it. It's got some shininess. You can see I can turn that down. So that, you notice that is I'm actually affecting how shiny it is on the models. All right. And we can adjust the color and all that sort of stuff, but we don't need to go into that. We just want to look at these meshes. If I want to create a new material that will uh, coat, say, just the Seder, let's go ahead and just click the New. And on this material, we'll click it, make sure it's selected by making sure it's, this little color there is green. And now we can look to add in a normal map, a gloss map, an albedo map, or a diffuse map. That's what they're calling it nowadays and a specular map. For instance, let's just go ahead and look to add in a normal map. To do that, uh, we need to just click anywhere in this little icon. As you can see, it's kind of a faded checkerboard. If I click in it, get to our Seder final, to our normal map. Now, nothing's changed in the scene. That's because I haven't actually applied it to any model yet at this point. All right. So if I go for the Seder mesh, with this selected, and I can click this little button that says apply. All right. With that applied, we can now say, if we need to, flip the X. As you can see, we now have a normal map that now runs on the mesh. Now, if we were to apply it to, say, the drone, let's just do that for fun and go ahead and apply it. You can see it makes that go completely wonky because the drone and the camera don't have materials and they don't even have UV layouts. So obviously that's going to be very helpful for that. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab the drone, grab our default and apply it and it goes back to being nice and smooth. But as you can see, it's very easy to be able to maneuver around our scene, look at our models from different views, and then add in our different materials as we need to. Let's assume for a second, of course, you know, uh, as we're working on this, uh, we don't want the drone in here anymore. Well, you can either select the drone in the scene or you can select the drone in our stack. All right, and you can just hit delete. You're left with the main title up here for the drone. I can go ahead and delete it. it. It creates a little group for you right off the bat. Let's go ahead and grab the camera. Because I'm grabbing the stack up here, if you want, in fact, I can say delete just the lens, lens housing that lens. You can actually, especially with the FBX, you can actually delete out pieces. I can select them in the scene itself. Say, let's get those screws, delete that, delete that. Or, of course, just grab the entire camera and delete it at once. Pretty quick, pretty easy. All right. All right. So anyway, I hope this has been helpful for you. Uh, again, it's just a quick introduction to meshes and Marmoset Toolbag 2. I hope it's been fun. My name is Stephen G. Wells, and this has been 3dmotive.com. Thanks for watching.